Human Ignorance Scaled Brave New Heights in the YouTube comments feed last night, and I made it happen. <laughs> I had no idea Homo sapiens could be this abjectly dumb on the seemingly uncontroversial issue of talk wrenches. Am I proud of myself? Absolutely. I'm Urban from Auto Expert. I'm to you. Newcast cheap. Website. Card. You know. Now, yesterday, I posted a truly magnificent video. So epic. Three cameras shoot in the fat cave. I nearly experienced leakage three times while presenting it. This could, of course, be old age, too. I get that, but not going there. I thought at the time, however, that the report would be completely uncontroversial. I didn't think I was lifting the frickin' lid, and I know I wasn't wrong. The central overarching thesis was when you use a torque wrench, any torque wrench, doesn't really matter, you can use one like this 3 8 jobby here, they're quite nice, quarter inch one for the bicycle, half inch one all-purpose jobby for the car, three quarters for the truck. If it is constructed like this, the thesis was grab it there because that's the only way to make the torque correct. If you choke up on it like this and then crank it, you will experience the same click, but you will be over tightening the fastener. And if you are so stupid that you put a cheetah bar on and grab it effectively out here, then you will under crank the fastener. And that's kind of dogs and cats living together as well. And nobody wants that. So don't do those things. There's one place to grab it, grab it here, and then the tightening process will work just fine. I'll put a link somewhere, probably up there, I guess, if you'd like to check yesterday's video out. And I say the report was uncontroversial because that's just how torque wrenches well work. It's called a fact. Facts don't give a shit what your opinion is, of course. They don't care if you disagree vehemently or you just can't see it. They're liberated from all that. Facts just exist. It must be lovely to be a fact. This hand position dependency occurs because the accurate operation of click type tubey torque wrenches is dependent on the proportional relationship between two different torques, one of which some people can't see. One that drives the click mechanism, that's the one they can't see, and the other that tightens the fastener, which is the one they see. The two torques are activated by the same effort, which would be your hand pulling on the wrench, but they operate through different lengths because they have different fulcrums. These are pivot points, right? Changing your hand position changes the relative proportionality of those two torques, and this really matters if you would like to get the fastener bang on. If your hand is out of position, the torque you apply will still make the click happen, but the torque on the fastener is gonna be wrong. It's called a fact. This is basic applied physics. It's not my opinion. There's no need for a debate. It's a fact. You either know it or you don't. You can disagree. It doesn't change the fact that it's a fact. I thought there would be people out there, the great unwashed, whatever, who were unaware of this operational requirement to have one's hand in the center of the grip of the torque wrench, but I wasn't actually expecting the astounding outbreak of malignant dumb shittery from people too thick to get it and yet also too aggressively convinced of their own epic capacity for physics type analysis to recognize the truth of the facts. Therefore, this video is gonna be in two parts. We've got part one for your entertainment. We're going to go live to the epicenter of the pandemic of talk wrench dumb shittery out there and see what the victims had to say for themselves. Dude, these people vote and breed. Like, if I was the gene pool, I'd be running for cover. Part two, right? We're going to look at what talk wrench manufacturers and related accredited industry specialists actually say about using torque wrenches. Perhaps there's a reason why they all say, keep your hand in the center of the freaking grip. It can't just be a coincidence, can it? Maybe it's the lizard people infiltrating industry and conspiring to control us all through our torque wrenches. Maybe it is that, but probably not.
but maybe. Just saying. I'll even throw in a part three as a separate video, if you like, perhaps tomorrow, where I'm going to demonstrate how much hand position actually matters when you use Yo Torque Wrench. I'll grab myself a digital torque tester and we'll see if we can't get a result out of that. This upcoming video is especially for you if you are that textbook, banjo strumming, pig squealy, room temperature IQ bogan bozo who's never really understood learning and why some people waste all their time with that when they could be having fun in the barnyard, like all the normal kids. If you watch that video, you're going to have to have a PhD in Dunning fucking Krugerism not to understand that this is how this aspect of reality actually works. I'm seeing Bugs Bunny Buck teeth stretching to the next postcode, eyes pointing in different directions, an HG in primer paint, a couch on the front porch, a cane toad mural on the wall. That's always tasteful. There's going to be some head scratching in the redneck paradise tomorrow, that's for sure. But now, let's address the Muppets. You are absolutely wrong on this one. For this style of torque wrench, it absolutely does not matter where you hold it. This is not a belief, it is a fact. The distance between the click mechanism and the point of action, the socket say, does not change regardless of where you hold this style of wrench. If only we could reanimate Isaac Newton, perhaps he would be motivated to umpire. There's two torques, dude. A preset torque that makes the mechanism click. You're going to set that one with the micrometer scale on the handle when you use your torque wrench. And if you want that to correspond to the correct torque at the fastener, you have to have your hand in the centre of the grip. That's how this works. There's no law against failing to understand this, of course. That's absolutely fine. It just makes the rest of us look smarter. So, thanks. I disagree with you on this. The length relationship between the socket, the secondary pivot, and the torque indicator, the clicking mechanism, remains the same regardless of where you hold the handle. If you want to convince me, provide evidence using a strain gauge that there is significant difference in output torque at different hand positions. Dude, when you say different hand positions, I get a picture in my head that I just can't forget. I can't unsee it. Thanks a lot. I don't care, A, if you agree with me or not, or B, if you can't see it. Your failure to perceive reality is not my problem, except in as much as I'm, you know, generally concerned about the health of the human gene pool. If the inner and outer beams are rigid, the entire mechanism is blind to the angle and point of application of the external force. Where you put your hand will not make any difference. Except it's not rigid, is it, genius? <laughs> there is a mechanism inside a torque wrench, pretty clearly. Ergo, the parts move relative to one another, which is kind of the opposite of it being rigid. If you wanted it to be rigid, you could weld it up, couldn't you? Right around the top of the ratchet mechanism there, you could weld it up where the stem goes into the tube. But then it would only work as a torque wrench if you used your bogan Jedi mind power, wouldn't it? You can see that a torque wrench has moving parts inside it, right? There is actually a pin right there at the top of the tube where the stem of the wrench pivots relative to the tube. You can see that. Therefore, it's not a rigid body, it pivots. And the pivot is not coincident with the center line of the fastener, which of course is the whole Point. Tomorrow, I'll be out in the real world testing this for myself. Edit, I am extremely hands-on. I don't pay anybody to fix things for me. If I don't know how, I'll learn. Fifty years has taught me many valuable lessons. Yeah, I can see that. All those valuable lessons. Except, of course, the ones comprising punctuation and basic literacy. Go figure. Dude... Physics is the real world. It is the world. Scientific theories explain the behaviour of reality. They are a proxy 
for reality. Therefore, when the average societal dumb shit refers to real-world testing as if it's somehow superior to science, he's really just wearing his I didn't pay attention at school t-shirt. I also have a different view on the relationship between the outer pipe and pivot point of the wrench. Sure, the force required to reach a certain torque would be greater if you hold the wrench closer to the pivot point, but the click would still come at the calibrated value. I fully agree with your notion that there are two different torques at play here, but there is also the fact that the calibration takes care of this. No, dude, it doesn't take care of this or anything else. It's not like Tiffany hosting a coke fueled hot tub hydrodynamics workshop, is it? Taking care of business. More importantly, on this whole issue of, quote, having a different view. <laughs> What an entirely bullshit concept. That is a virus that has infected online humanity. I've got a different view. You can have a different view on issues like blondes versus redheads. The alleged superiority of one or the other is just epistemically subjective. View yourself out, dude. But when we talk about things like torque wrenches, okay, there's only ontology and epistemic objectivity, right? Think of it like this. There's a set of facts. You don't get to debate your way to a set of different facts because the facts are the reality, right? Torque wrenches work a particular way. It's a fact. There's nothing ambiguous about how a torque wrench works. It's a basic machine. It's been carefully designed. The structure and the mechanism is known. The components are made to particular tolerances. They have particular heat treatment. There's a spring rate, thread pitch, pivot geometry, etc. It's all known, carefully designed in. Nothing about how this works is up for the grab of opinion. It's not a frickin' debate. You don't get to have a view about this stuff. You can see how it works if you put in the work and you learn the physics, or you can be taught how to use it properly in a training course if you're an operator, and then you don't need to bother learning the physics. Still all good. What you don't get to do is opine your way to a completely different set of operational protocols because it suits you. The one thing you cannot do is change reality with an opinion that does not align with the facts. If you try that one on, dude, you're just another would-be politician. I would like to see you demonstrate how changing your hand position changes the calibration. I have my doubts on the latter and you could provide proof for skeptics such as myself. It doesn't change the calibration. The only things that change the calibration are wear and tear, damage or recalibration. Changing your hand position changes the torque which is applied to the fastener. Calibration is unchanged. I would further suggest that here the burden of proof is not on me. The burden of understanding the facts is on you. And I really don't care how dumb anyone chooses to remain. But I am going to prove it to you in a separate video because I'm that kind of magnanimous stand-up nice guy. Just ask any of my five ex-wives. Especially three and five, the sisters. <laughs> or the current wife, of course. But first, here's what torque wrench manufacturers and acknowledged industry specialists actually say about using torque wrenches. Most torque wrenches are length dependent and feature a marked loading point on the handle, but many people don't use it. For accurate results, most torque wrenches have to be operated with your hand centred over the marked load point. Point. That's a quote from Norbar Australia on their blog from July the 22nd of 2021. It's a report called 10 Things You Should Know About Your Torque Wrench. That was basically point number 6 of 10, and it does seem rather odd to me to include it if YouTube's fake-named fucktards are actually right and hand position doesn't really matter 
at all. As most torque wrenches are length specific, always grasp the torque wrench in the center of the handle. If two hands need to be used, place one hand on top of the other. That quote from Snap-on, a technical reference manual there called Proper Torque Wrench Use and Maintenance. Only a very brave man indeed, or a properly dog shit dumb YouTube comments feed fake name mechanical hillbilly would argue the toss on torque wrenches against snap on. Always grip the handle firmly in the center of the grip. That's a quote from Warren and Brown's blog there, a 2015 story entitled, when using a torque wrench, it is extremely important to understand how to correctly use this precision tool. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to sense a fairly consistent theme here. Always pull the wrench squarely from the center of the handle. That's from High Force this time, the operating manual for their OMHTW01 torque wrench. It seems odd to me to impose this constraint of always do that if it doesn't actually matter. The design of certain wrenches make the tool length dependent. What does this mean? It means that the actual torque applied to the fastener varies if the hand position on the wrench is varied, even if the wrench is preset. This occurs if the pivot point of the wrench mechanism is not coincidental with the center of rotation of the fastener or bolt. So gully gee, Jim Bob, it might be high time to climb down off that land race, mightn't it? Last time I looked, the pivot point of the wrench mechanism on a torque wrench was not coincident with the center line of the fastener, and they must be talking about that. Who knew? That last quote was from a business called Mounts, with a Z at the end, a firm of Silicon Valley industrial nerds who described themselves as, quote, the torque tool specialists. They've got a pedigree in quality control for fastener torque in mass production environments. And finally, hold the wrench with the palm of your hand in the middle of the handle when applying force. If you hold the torque wrench at the end of the handle, the amount of torque may be less than what you need, even if the wrench is preset to apply a specific amount of torque. Likewise, if you hold the torque wrench too close to its head, you may apply too much torque. Well, intercourse me all the way to the next life. And I'll get back to you by Ouija board on that one. That's exactly what I said yesterday, encapsulated in a few tight sentences. That quote comes from Capri Tools, a US-based premium auto tool manufacturer with a racing pedigree in a post entitled, How Do You Select the Right Torque Wrench for the Job? from August the 4th of 2021. You can confirm all of this by simple Google searching for those keywords if you want. Just scroll back, find the keywords, pump them into Google and verify that I have not made any of this up. Or you can stay as thick as a wall made entirely of cinder blocks. That's entirely a matter for you, dude, like I care. Please don't look at me as if I should care. I don't know how. If your mommy and daddy told you that your opinion really, really matters, time to grow up because they were wrong, dude. Take it up with them. Failing to understand reality is a choice. And if you do that, it's on you. One does wonder how credible specialist outfits, like all of those just referenced there, with their reputations so clearly on the line and linked to every statement they produce, how could they get this issue of torque wrench hand position so horribly wrong if YouTube commenters are right? Perhaps, just putting it out there gently for your consideration, perhaps these credible organisations are right about torque wrenches after all.